The Cardinals return home to Bush Stadium, a packed house expected tonight as St. Louis takes on the National League East leading Philadelphia Phillies. They are paced by a St. Louisan, the slugger, Ryan Howard. Pat Burrell has had an all-star type year. Jimmy Rollins, last year's MVP. A former teammate tries to stop him. Kyle Lowe's goes for St. Louis. Steamy here in downtown St. Louis as we get you set for baseball. It's the St. Louis Cardinals and the Philadelphia Phillies. The Cardinals at 61 and 50. The Phillies are 10 games above the 500 mark. And since 2002, here in St. Louis, the Phillies have played very, very well. Earlier this year, they won a game here at Bush Stadium, but since 02, Charlie Manuel's club is 16 and 8. That's Al Bravosky. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Welcome to the broadcast booth. And no doubt about it, Al, this is another important series for the Cardinals. Uh, very important. As you said, Philadelphia is leading the East, but they may be a contender for the wild card where the Cardinals are tied with Milwaukee in that department. So these are very important games, and you must win them. Really, no series is not going to have significance. Loge pitched against Philly earlier this year, had good success in that game, and the Cardinals actually beat their starter, Cole Hamels, earlier this season. He's one of the top lefties in all of baseball. He really had a bad outing his last time out. He's been throwing a lot more curveballs. He has an excellent changeup, good fastball, and Kyle Loge is coming off a loss, and that's the first time since early May when he had lost a ball game. So we'll have to see what these two can bring out. I know uh, Cole Hamels has not gotten a lot of run support, and that's odd when you talk about the Phillies offense. So it's the former Phil, Kyle Loge, now is with, uh, with St. Louis, going for the Cardinals tonight. And the lefty, Cole Hamels. When we come back, July's top five plays. That's next on FSN. Welcome back to baseball here on FSN Midwest. Game one of three, the Phillies and the Cardinals in this weekend set here at Bush Stadium. Let's take a look at the top five plays as we turn the calendar from July to August. The top five of July. We'll start with number five, a walk-off homer for Troy Gloss. That was on July 2nd against the Mets. Well, Troy Gloss had a very good month of July. He got it started early with a big walk-off win. At number four for St. Louis in our top plays of July. Albert Pujols. With a home run at Shea Stadium in the 14th, a two-run shot for the Cardinals. Boy, did he come back strong after a tough night to, before, and he made them pay. How about Albert and that little uh, wink for the fans? July 20th, Miles, a walk-off grand slam. Yeah, that's just about everybody's reaction. Tenth time that that's happened in Cardinal history, and Miles was the hero. Let's go to number two. And it's an all-star appearance, first ever for Ryan Ludwig. It makes a great diving catch in an all-star game. He'll never forget that. At number one, an appearance that hopefully the Cardinals can ride into postseason play just a couple of nights ago, and that's Chris Carpenter. And I think that's how important the return of Chris Carpenter is. He's your number one. Hopefully he will go out and pitch like a number one. He sure did finish this game strong, his final inning with a couple strikeouts, and just having Chris Carpenter back is a big lift to this team. And Adam Wainwright is just around the corner. Carpenter are number one on the list of the top five plays in July. A look around the major leagues is coming up next from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Welcome back to our FSN Midwest studio inside Bush Stadium. I'm Pat Paris. Dan and Al have the call between the Cardinals and Phillies coming up in just a moment. First, we're going to talk about day baseball at Wrigley Field. Cubs back home after the four-game sweep of the Brewers, welcoming the Pirates. Top of the second, two on for Jason Michaels. And he singles through the right side, bringing in a run off Jason Marquis. Pirates stake to a 1-0 lead. Then the very next batter, Jack Wilson. He too delivers with an RBI single. Buck goes up two zip on Marquis and the Cubs to the top of the six. They add to the lead. Michaels, the two out solo shot. He can homer off somebody other than the Cardinals. Number six on the year for Michaels, three nothing Pirates. To the bottom of the eighth, Cubs try to mount a comeback, but Reed Johnson grounds into the inning ending double play. Bottom of the ninth, one last effort by the Cubbies, but Henry Blanco also ends the game on a ground uh, double play ball. 
Fire 10, the Cubs, their first shutout loss of the season at Wrigley. They snapped Chicago's five-game winning streak as well. Colorado leads Florida early on in the National League scoreboard. Milwaukee, a 3-0 lead against Atlanta with Jeff Supon on the mound there. Elsewhere on the NL scoreboard, it's the Nats with a two-zip lead. Later on, Pedro takes on the Astros, and San Francisco is in San Diego. Dan and Al back with the call. Uh, first, we'll tell you about U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live. Rick and I will be here with you right after the game. We'll uh, also hand out the Hungo Award. Dan and Al back with the call next here on FSN Midwest. Enjoy the game. We'll see you afterward. Ryan Howard taking BP earlier tonight. He's got 30 home runs, second in the league. He leads the league in RBIs with 95. 39 all-star appearances combined for Yvonne Rodriguez, Ken Griffey Jr., and Manny Ramirez. Al, the big question is, who will have the best impact on their team? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. I have to say Manny Ramirez, and we'll see him next week when the Dodgers come in town. But I think he's such an awesome hitter that he's going to hit any type of pitching, and the National League should be no challenge to him. To challenge tonight for the Cardinals facing a lefty. That is Cole Hamels. He is 9 and 6. Kyle Lowe's, the former Philly, the former Red, the former Twin. Now at the Cardinals looking for win number 13. Baseball is coming up next. Cardinals baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser. Reach for the perfect ba balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. Buy Auto Tire for the lowest prices in town with 26 locations to serve you. You ought to go to Auto Tire, the tire pros. Buy Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. And by Geico Direct, a 15-minute phone call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Muggy night. It is hot here in St. Louis. What you might expect on August 1st. Here in the Midwest, the Cardinals and the Phillies, third series between these two teams. Just something that is a bit rare to see a team from another division a couple of times come through your place. And that's what we've got here with these two teams as Jimmy Rollins looks at a ball. A Rico starter is Kyle Loge for the St. Louis Cardinals. He is 12 and 3 on the year. Great winning percentage. He lost his last time out. See him bounce back from that defeat. And that was the first one since May the 9th. And really this first loss. Or really uh, he has the, the best winning percentage in, bet in major leagues from, in better than a year. The Phillies have won five straight. They start play tonight a game in front of New York and Florida is a game and a half back. Jimmy Rollins hitting 272 against the Cardinals well below the 200 mark. He has been quiet. Charlie Manuel has seen his club last few seasons in the second half. Be one of the best teams in all the baseball. Rollins pops it up. It's foul and it's out of play. You know Jimmy Rollins and he's had a couple issues with Charlie Manuel. Has played in 84 games. The Phillies are 46 and 40 in those games, and he's so important to their offense. In the 46 wins, he scored 38 runs. In the 40 losses, just 12. So you got to keep him off the bases. He's got 26 steals on the year with his good speed, and that's down and in. It's two and two. Well, that's part of it. You know, he's he's such an electric player when he reaches base and. You know, you've got a lot of thump and thunder in the middle of their lineup, so you don't want people on in front of them. 2 2 pitch. Up and away from Kyle Loge. Got knocked around in his last start. That was at Shea Stadium on Sunday. One of the rare losses we have seen this year. Just his third of the season. The 3 2 pitch. Take it in the dirt. And a leadoff walk to Rollins. Not the way you want to start. Seems like in that last start, he kind of got away from throwing a sinker. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup. It is loaded, and they're all swinging a hot bat right now. We'll highlight Ryan Howard, 12 games at Bush Stadium. Five home runs, 23 RBIs. Rollins, Victorino, and Utley here in the first. Then Howard, Burl, and Jenkins, Brentlett, Ruiz, and Hamels. Here's their center fielder Shane Victorino hitting 289 nine home runs 38 RBIs. Let's see if they want to test Yadier Molina here early on. Victorino is a switch hitter just like Jimmy Rollins. And both of them have 26 steals so that's what I'm talking about. You want to keep the two top guys off the off the base pass. 
last five games for Victorino he's hitting 455 a couple of home runs seven RBIs 10 for his past 22. We know the Phillies can hit and when they're all clicking watch out. Jimmy Rollins 26 deals and 27 attempts. Long look again by Lowe. She's not running. And the pitch is taken for a ball. Kyle Loge, a free agent to be. And the Cardinals were emphatic in the fact that they were not going to trade Kyle Loge. It was not going to happen. John Mosellock, no trades were made, and the exception of Anthony Reyes, but none to affect his big club. Carpenter is back. Wainwright's coming back. It's a foul ball. The more we find out about some of the proposed deals, I don't really think that uh, John Mozalak really had, you know, a willing partners. You know, they're, the asking price was extremely high for Fuentes or for any of the deals that he was pursuing, and you can understand fully well why he did not pull the trigger. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Popped up and out of play. Saw that shot of uh, Wainwright. 20 curves, five sliders yesterday. He'll throw it 100% tomorrow. So that's a big bullpen session coming up for him tomorrow afternoon. And then the next time we'll be facing some hitters? Correct. Looking at Tuesday. Right. One ball and two strikes on Shane Victorino. Don't forget the gates open at 415 tomorrow. We have a ticket. It is Creep Core photo night here at the ballpark and we'll open up the gates at 415. Chase Utley is on deck. Al Loesch pitched a season high eight innings and allowed two runs and four hits for his eighth win. Runner goes a swing and a miss a strikeout of Victorino and a stolen base number 27 for Rollins. They got a tremendous jump. Let's take a look at the Cardinals defense tonight around the horn is brought to you by auto tire. It's Mather and left Schumacher and center Ryan Ludwig over and right gloss is tourist miles and pool holes along the infield Molina behind the plate and Kyle Loge an ERA under two in his four career starts against the Phils. Kyle Loge defeated the, the Phillies for his eighth win on that season high eight innings only Pat Burrell reached him for a two run home run. And Utley has been swinging a hot bat. He has hit safely in six straight. Six home runs in his last 47 games. That's a little bit of a surprise after he had 21 through his first 59. So the home runs not coming as quickly, but this guy is such a great hitter. 293, 27 homers, 75 RBIs. And just six home runs his last 47 games, but on this road trip, he's five for 11 with a pair of home runs. So don't count him out. Runner at second base, good speed, and Jimmy Rollins. Looked to be a changeup. Popped up, Miles is there. Utley was out in front. That's a good pitch with a lot of these Phillies hitters. Change up, and look at the bottom fall out of that one. Had him out in front, pops it up. Kyle Osh has only allowed five first inning runs. But Ryan Howard has done some damage against Cardinal pitching and especially in this ballpark. He says he loves to come back to St. Louis. He is one of the top five hitters last three years against the Cardinals. Mom and dad are here. He's got a twin brother, older sister, another older brother that uh, is an assistant AD at Kansas. First pitch to Ryan Howard. Well, Ryan. Saw his average 239 on the season, but 478 this year with five home runs, 14 RBIs against Cardinals, lifetime 368. 14 RBIs against St. Louis, five homers. That's just this year. The 1 0. Saw that uh, shot of his family. Mom and dad are here. He said it's a thrill every time he hits a homer, obviously, with. Family here. His sister is here, I believe. And they said they, they knew that Ryan Howard was going to be a slugger because he used to take a whipple ball bat to his sister's head. Mom and dad. <laughs> That's when they oh, knew. Really? That's when they knew. Well, there's a chance for Luke, isn't there? Oh, yeah. 
The 2 0 pitch. Oh, good pitch. Pulled the string, 2 and 1. He went to arbitration against the Phillies this year and won that case. He's making $10 million, so they're going to have to pay him a bundle again next year. Well, gives you the production that he's doing this year. He's second in home runs, first in RBIs. You don't, you don't mind paying it. Well, it's a long term deal, and he hasn't gotten it yet. The 2 1 pitch. He was an MVP, two different leagues in the minor league system of the Philadelphia Phillies. Then he was brought up. They had Jim Tomey over at first. A lot of people inquired about trying to get Howard, but they traded Tomey to make room for Ryan Howard. He won the Rookie of the Year. He's been an MVP, fastest ever to 100 home runs in baseball history. The 2-2 pitch to Ryan Howard. Here it comes. If there's a blemish, it's the strikeout. Most in the National League. Ryan Howard at 142. Then you have Reynolds of Arizona, Ugla, Young, and Matt Kemp. Where's Adam Dunn on that list? Yeah. Three and two. First base is open. On deck, Pat Pearl. The next from Kyle Loge. Hit down the left field line. Mather will give it a look, and it's out of play. Throw that low 80s change up, and then when he threw the 93 mile an hour fastball, that looked like it was about 103. Came back with another change up. By now, you know the story of Ryan Howard, Lafayette High School, played at Missouri State, then Southwest Missouri State. He said he still goes back there. Talked to him before the game, off seasons for dinners and functions to raise money. AD there is Bill Rowe, who's a baseball man, a guy that you and I know very sure. well. Good man. Three and two on Howard. And he walked him. Might not be the worst thing. Two walks in the inning. And it brings in Pat Burrow. It's, it's okay as long as you get Pat Burrow out. Pat Burrell's had a very good year. 279, 26 home runs, 64 driven in. Yeah, between, what do they have? 83, are, uh, 83 home runs between Burrell, Utley, and Howard. Two outs, two on. Fastball, low and away. Struggle here in the first. 21 pitches so far. Chili's high pitch speed at 94, the low at 73. Loge has been very good with that two seamer. The sink on it. That catches the outside corner and also has been primarily using his slider. But two starts ago, he was over 100 pitches and he told me 90 of the pitches were the two seamer. Didn't use anything else as he had pinpoint control with that. Yeah, he could. He could. He's doing an outstanding job keeping ground balls. One and two. Keeping the ball down and having them hit balls on the ground. Has not thrown a first pitch strike yet. The one two pitch, two and two. But he is a strike away from getting out of this jam. If you're wondering, Loge has allowed 12 home runs on the year. The most is Looper. He's allowed 17. You know, he ranks seventh in the National League in the fewest home runs per nine innings. .60. Pat Burrell, known for his power, has homered. The Phillies franchise record 28 different ballparks. He homered uh, earlier this year here at the New Bush Stadium. That was the first time in his career. Two on the 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Two strikeouts in the inning. Cardinals coming up in their half of the first. A view from the Champions Club here at uh, Bush Stadium. All you can eat buffet and all the drink. The Champions Club here at Bush Stadium. For a hot night like this, it's a good way to take it in. 
Rico Strider is Cole Hamels, 9 and 6, 3.27 ERA. You see the strikeouts, 135 on the year. Rico Strider, Cole Hamels. First, time for first with a couple shutouts. He's second in innings pitch and opponent batting average. He's tied for third in complete games. But he doesn't get a lot of run support. Three hits last night for is Turris, so Pujols will hit third, and in front of him it'll be Mather, and leading it off, Cesar is Turris. Tony La Russa decided that uh, is Turris deserved another shot in the leadoff spot in front of Pujols. Well, I think what you're also seeing is is that uh, Tony, knowing that Schumacher really struggles against left-handers, puts a Turris up in the leadoff spot, and then Schumacher in the ninth hole. 2 1 pitch. Ryan Howard, nice play to his right. Race to the bag. He beats his Turris for the first out. Cardinals lineup. Let's take a look. For Tony the Russo, is Turris, Mather, and Pujols. Month of July, a good one for Ludwig, the cleanup man, with seven home runs, 18 RBIs, and his first ever All Star appearance. Then Gloss, Molina, Miles, Loge, and Schumacher. That's a look at your lineup for the Cardinals, and here's Joe Mather. Let's talk with Joe after the game last night in the clubhouse, and he said you could not believe the footing, the outfield at Turner Field last night. He said they did no work on the track. He said in out in center it was it was tough to get a good jump because you felt you were slipping the entire time. He said I don't want to use that as an excuse, but it was a rough footing out there in the outfield. Well, we stated that. Mm -hmm. He said he got to the plate in his first plate appearance, looked down at his shoe, and he said he had mud halfway up on his shoe, and he couldn't believe it. It was that muddy out there in the track. One and one the count on Mather, who played center field last night. He's in left this evening. I did see him work on the track, but not much. And it really looked like very little drying agent. They had the tractor dragging a, a screen, try to uh, turn over some of the dirt, but no drying agent. Four game hit streak. Longest of his brief major league career on the line tonight. Rick and Keel still out with that stomach injury. And maybe that's what forced the Cardinals to send Jimenez down and bring up Jaime Garcia instead of maybe an outfielder because Rick still cannot run. 2 2 pitch. Foul tip by Mather off the home plate. And remember, Rick off of Cole Hamels hit a home run. He and Ludwig did earlier this year when the Cardinals beat Cole Hamels. Home plate umpire is mask went flying off. That's Laz Diaz. Marty Foster at first, Wally Bell at second, Paul Schreiber over at third. 2 2. Mather out to left in a base hit. The defense as we go around the horn is brought to you as always by Auto Tire. Hamels lost to the Cardinals in seven innings pitched back on July 8th at Citizens Bank Park. Burl, Victorino, and Jenkins, then Bruntlett. Rollins, Utley, and Howard, and Ruiz is behind the plate. It's a five game hitting streak for Joe Mather. Albert has a six game hitting streak. He's had a home run against Cole Hamels. Albert into center for the second out. Just missed it. Oh, Dan, so much for uh, the momentum for each club in the Milwaukee Cup Series. Milwaukee has taken a commanding lead, 6 0 in the third inning out of Atlanta. And of course, Pirates go in there and, and beat uh, the Cubbies. That's why every game and every series is so important when you get uh, within 60 games or so. Here's Ludwig with two outs. Base hit out to left. Another pitch that was up. The Cardinals are getting some pretty good swings here in the first. With two outs, the Cardinals are one of the top hitting teams in baseball, hitting 284 with two outs. And when you consider what they do with two outs and running uh, runners in scoring position, 
They have scored 236 runs with two outs, most in the majors this season. That's a great statistic if it's your club, and it's killer if uh, it's the other team. Prince Fielder and Mike Cameron both with home runs. That six nothing lead for Milwaukee. Two outs and two on for the Cardinals here in the bottom of the first Troy Gloss. It's the first pitch out of play and he has slowed up a little bit as of late. Jason Marquis took the loss in that Chicago game. And Troy got a hit last night is making one for 13 in the Atlanta series and hit under 200 on the road trip. And he was hot as can be. Here's the L1. No balls, two strikes. 0 for 3 with a strikeout in three career plate appearances is Troy Gloss. Against Cole Hamels, you saw Molina, he's on deck. A little bad blood between these two teams this season. Going back to Ryan Howard being hit by a pitch, the slide by Duncan. And Gloss hits it a mile high out to left. Pat Burrow under it, makes the catch with two hands. Cardinal Strand two. Jenkins, Brentley, Ruiz coming up in a scoreless game. The pizza pie here at the ballpark. It's one of the meals you can get here at Bush Stadium. Jenkins, Brentlett, Ruiz for the Phillies. So we move to the top of the second here at Bush, along with Al Roboski, I'm Dan McLaughlin, and our Bud Productions crew. Cal Loge, a 25 pitch first inning. We saw him make a starting in San Diego right after the break, and it was a 30 pitch first inning, and then all of a sudden you looked up and he had gone seven innings, and Cardinals had won the game. So let's see if he settles in tonight. First pitch is taken in the dirt by Jenkins, the former Brewer. He's got to be thinking I spent all those years in Milwaukee we didn't do anything would not <laughs> go out and get anybody and now they're trading for everyone. Didn't see C. Sabathia. Hey. One ball one strike. He hasn't done much against the Cardinals this year but nearly a 300 hitter in his life or in his career. One one pitch taken down and in. Kyle Loge, since wearing this Cardinal uniform, has pitched great at this ballpark. With the Phillies last year, very good against St. Louis. Also with Cincinnati, he shut down the Redbirds. Jenkins pulls it foul. And here at home, he's been outstanding. Six and one. All right. The opponent's only hitting 224 against him here at home. 335 on the road. The 2 2 pitch. Manny Ramirez will make his debut tonight for Los Angeles. You see his career at Bush Stadium 7 and 2, a 2.82 ERA in 16 starts. Jason Bay has a base hit and also scored a run already for the Red Sox. Center field. Schumacher is there for the first out. Stay cool as the Cardinals go head to head with the Atlanta Braves on August 22nd. And you can get a cooler bag given to 10,000 fans as they enter the uh, stadium. Brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's a hungo night tonight. And the candidates are. <laughs> I was going to say that beautiful young lady, but she wasn't smiling. So she got zipped. Sorry. She didn't look real happy to be holding yeah. it. Albert, Albert's had a good uh, road trip. How about uh, Mather? She's not hitting five straight games. She's Saw looking the return at that thing, of Alec. Chris Carpenter. What, I think she what is this? Why are you giving me this thing? I don't think she liked it. I bet she didn't. She didn't understand the. Significance. Brentlett is one for four against the Cardinals this year. Now one for five. Strikeout. 
Three strikeouts so far for Kyle Loach. Sunday night is television's biggest night. It's the summer sports block, beginning with the Hooters Dream Girls, then baseball's Golden Age, followed by amazing sports stories. And finally, the best damn top 50 is the summer sports block, and it begins at 7 on FSN Midwest. Spurs is hitting six games, and Keel's hitting nine games. There's Carlos Ruiz, the catcher. The 0 1 pitch. He asked me a question, then you can't even remember what you asked me. Oh, you're well, talking about Hungo candidates. Okay, now I get it. Hey. On the outside corner for a strike, one and two. I think I'm following you, Al. Good for you. Nobody else is. Two and two. Pitcher Cole Hamels is on deck. Two Ruiz. outs and nobody on. Ruiz has hit 321 in his last eight games. Hit out to shallow right center field. Ludwig is there and he'll make the catch. One, two, three go the Phils. Baseball tonight on FSN Midwest. This damn sports show period is the greatest nightly sports show on television tonight. 12 time Pro Bowler Junior Seau will tell us if he's coming back. Plus, rapper The Game stops by. All on the best damn sports show period later tonight. Yadier Molina leads it off. He is eighth among National League batting leaders at 308. 0 for 1 last night as a pinch hitter that snapped his six game hitting streak. Mentioned the bad blood between these two teams and some of the physical play that has been there. Remember the collision that Brentlett had with Molina earlier this year. Yeah, but that was always a situation there where Brentlett felt terrible. He just had no other choice as trying to score. And the throw put uh, Molina in a very awkward position blocking the plate. Jimmy Catcher Rollins crossed up on that last pitch. And Jimmy Rollins took a little exception to a hard slide by, by Chris Duncan. Which ultimately hurt Duncan to the point where he may be done for the year. It was that slide. It is head on the dirt sliding into the bag at second base. Here comes a 1 0 pitch to Molina. Jimmy Rollins with some interesting comments saying that and very open and honest about it saying that basically you know th this is such a long season and if you don't get the guy back this year you'll get him back next year but certainly in the back of his mind. Reno. I did talk to Gary Matthews a teammate of mine and a guy that was known for very hard slides one of the Phillies broadcasters and he had no problem with it. Al McRae. Al McRae was noted as well, one of the hey. middle infielders like to be uh, exposed when Hal McRae was coming in at you. Three and one on Molina. He was headed towards first. This hot night here in St. Louis. Glad you're with us on FSN. We'll have game two for you tomorrow night as well. Hey Dan looking at the weather forecast next for three or four days it's going to get even hotter. Oh yeah. Here's a three one pitch to Molina. Three and two. And early part of next week will be push pushing three triple digits. Heat index at uh, the ballpark during batting practice was well above 100. Here's a 3 2. Get out of play and foul. Real important series for both these teams. Phillies leading their division by a game. The Cardinals can gain a game on Chicago with a win. Cole Hamels is fifth best with 135 strikeouts coming into play tonight. You've got a guy at the plate that doesn't strike out, Molina. Doesn't strike out here, but he'll fly out, it looks like. 
right center and the catch made by Victorino. Cardinals with two base hits but stranded two in that first inning. Cole Hamill's last time up gave up nine runs. Well, Atlanta scored nine runs in the fourth inning. He made an error, also Utley made an error, so only five of them were earned, or four of them were earned, five unearned. But they said very uncharacteristic. He's throwing a lot of breaking balls. Last two starts, a lot of breaking balls, much more than the fastball and changeup. His changeup is outstanding, yes. too. Gentleman on his team possesses a great changeup, Jamie Moyer. Cardinals in this series. You see Hamels tonight. They'll face Joe Blanton, who they picked up from Oakland tomorrow night, and then the Sunday night game. It'll be Todd Wellemeyer and Brett Myers, and Looper will go for the Cardinals tomorrow night. We saw the curveball right there, and it was kind of a hanger. 0 oh, 2. Miles Another waves one. at it. Expecting something else. First strikeout, number 136 this year for Cole Hamels. Curveball there. This one was much better, and as you're right, when a late swing just trying to get a piece of it as he was looking for the something else. Aaron Miles, by the way, hitting 328 in his starts this year. When the guy plays, he produces. Cal Loge. 068 hitter, no home runs, four RBIs. Utley with it on a high chopper. Over to Ryan Howard. Cole Hamels leads it off when we come back. There's no score. We are presented in FSN HD, beautiful high definition tonight. Game one between the Cardinals and the Phils. Six games between these two teams so far this year. Three and three are these teams as Lowe's will face Cole Hamels to start this third inning in the top of their lineup. Managers in this game. Let's start with Charlie Manuel. Laid back. Says he's got two rules. Show up on time. Hustle. Play hard. Tony La Russa. How would you describe Tony Al? Um, a winner, a Hall of Famer, and a guy that uh, has a few more rules. But two of them are the same as Charlie's. Jimmy Rollins has had his issues with a couple of those rules. He was late to a ball game at Chase Stadium. He got caught up in traffic, and Charlie Manuel benched him. Now I don't understand why in that occasion Jimmy Rollins said he did not agree with his manager when he benched him for not hustling and running out a you know a pop up he understood that one. First time through the lineup four strikeouts for Kyle Loge. Charlie Manuel was on record as saying that he wanted to see Kyle Loge come back. He really liked him. Yeah, and, and apparently there was a, a three year offer. For a short period of time, he Kyle thought he might be going there, and then he also thought he might be going to uh, New you know, York. To New York. Ken Griffey Jr. is one for one with an RBI for the White Sox. They lead Kansas City one to nothing in the top of the third. No junior in the Central Division anymore. Walk and a steal, first time up for Rollins. Say goodbye to Ken Griffey Jr. Say hello to Manny Ramirez. We'll see him next week here at Bush Stadium. He's played in 13 games against St. Louis. Manny has with three home runs. I would have thought the numbers for Ken Griffey Jr. as a red against the Cardinals would have been a little bit better. He did have 22 home runs in 74 games, but you're talking about one of the greatest players ever, and you just expect to see these numbers that are, you know, just jump off the page at you. This date in baseball history. 
Brought to you by Schnucks. Vince Coleman steals his 74th base of the season, which was a, a major league rookie record. August 1st, 1985. Come on to be the rookie of the year in the National League. This is pretty well hit out to center field. Catch made by Schumacher. Rollins back to first. Vince Coleman, many say, could have had an NFL career. Decided to play baseball out of Florida A&M. I think he chose the right sport. And I'm not saying he couldn't have, but I think he, he enjoys his health today a lot more than he would have if he was playing in the NFL. Now Vince was a kicker and a punter. Right. Which might surprise they still some get folks. You, they still could get you roughed up a little bit. Strong legs. There's Chase Utley, runner at first is Rollins. How much running, Al, do you think you want to do when you've got Utley and Howard up? Make sure you don't run out of an inning. Well, you don't want to run out of an inning, but you know, you steal off the pitcher. And he's been highly successful with 27 out of 28 attempts. So if he gets a jump. We talked about how Ryan Braun of, of Milwaukee would jump out there. Now watch Jimmy Rollins, a very good base dealer, does not get in the air where he becomes exposed, makes those little steps out there, really paying attention to the pitcher, doesn't put his head down. A pop up, shallow center. Skip Schumacher is there to make the catch. And Skip leads it off when we come back. No score midway through three. Well, you don't get many cracks at Cole Hamels. He is one of the best pitchers in baseball and in the National League and on the road. You take a look at this. All righties, with the exception of Cole Hamels, the best road winning percentage since 2007, and Hamels is 11 and 4. Lincecum, PB, Sheets, and Aaron Cook also on that list. Pretty exclusive company when you're talking about those five right there. Pitch in the dirt to Skip Schumacher, who's in the ninth spot in this lineup. Cole was 15 and 5 last year in the 3.39 ERA. Skip waits on the pitch. Rollins going out. Can't get it. A base hit into center. And a rare hit for Schumacher with a broken bat against the lefty. He will take it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Jimmy Rollins going out, reaches up the last second, but well, he's about a 5 7 frame. Needed 5 8. Skip was hitting just a 152 against left handed pitching prior to that hit. It was so good after the All Star break last year. Let's see if the Cardinals want to bunt here with Cesar Isturis. Showing butt and a pitch up and in. Sure, so for one tonight, so he's two for four when facing Cole Hamels. Rounded out to first, his first time up. Ruiz, he just 235. You know, Ruiz, not a real good throwing catcher. Schumacher is eight for nine in stolen base attempts. He might put on the hit and run. Schumacher has been faking going to second base. It's the token throw over there by Cole Hamels. One sacrifice this year for his tourists. Outfield is shallow and here comes a 1 0 pitch. Two balls and no strikes with Joe Mather on deck and a visit from Carlos Ruiz. Well Hamels really doesn't have you know he lifts the leg straight up not a real quick move to the plate. Mind you that Tuesday, August 5th, Dodgers in town. 
National Child Identification Program's National Night Out, sponsored by the American Football Coaches Association and the FBI. Find out more at childidprogram.com. Third baseman Eric Brentland is in on the grass, the former Astro. Up and in, two is Turris, 3 0. Hamels doesn't walk many. Pretty much a three strikeouts to every walk. And that's ball four. Four straight to his tourists. And now it's Joe Mather, nobody out. The Cardinals now made the announcement while we were on the road of Jason Isringhausen back in the closer's role. You talked about it at times. You'd almost rather see him come into certain games and have a chance to close one out. I think it's kind of interesting that his first crack at it will be back here at home. You see how the fan reception is. And it's almost to the point where Tony's going to have to use him because it's been so long since Jason his last pitch his last outing was Sunday. With all the overworked arms of that bullpen Jason's not one of them. One ball. The first time up on Mather, then he was swinging away on a base hit. Ball one, that's five straight on the Cardinals is Turris and Mather as far as balls are concerned. Five straight from Cole Hamels. Rich Duby, the pitching coach, out to talk to him. He can't get the ball down. It's only 24 years of age. So very bright future for this left-hander who Lives in Philadelphia now. He was born in San Diego. He was a number one draft pick of the Phillies back in the 2002 draft, 17th selection overall. Listed 6'3, 190. As many visits as they've had so far, and you're seeing the balls mount up, mechanically, you get the impression that they are picking up something that they don't like. I knew there was, you know, when Miles is there, he was kind of worried about him rushing the plate a little bit. That'll make the ball high. So not to, you know, guys that slide step, pick, do kind of mechanically do a lot of problems to throw strikes. Here's a 1 1. Just missed 2 and 1. Yeah, at least that looked like it was. Could have been called either way. And it's not really paying much attention to the base runners and just working on the hitter. 2 1 pitch with two runners on. Mather out to deep left field at the track, at the wall, out of here, into the bullpen. A three run homer for Joe Mather, his fifth of the season. RBIs 10, 11, and 12, and the Cardinals lead it three to nothing here in the third. Hard to make you think twice about Joe Mather and hit two home runs on the road trip. He had a great series in Atlanta and a great start to this homestand. To show you how strong he is, is he really kind of fought that ball off. Much shorter stroke holding his hands closer to the body. Pujols takes a strike at the knees. Still nobody out. Cardinals have jumped out to a 3 0 lead thanks to Mather. Albert fly to deep center his first time up. Reaches for this. Hot shot. Brutlet up with it. Spins and throws and takes a hit away from Pujols. What a tremendous play by Eric Bruntlett over at third. Pedro Feliz is on the disabled list, so Bruntlett getting playing time and shows you that he can play several different positions and is ready for the challenge. He had a play earlier this year against Washington, which was the final out of the game. He was playing shortstop and saved a base hit from going into center, which would have been. The tying run and the winning run coming in. I think Albert caught in between there as 
the throw was a little bit offline and Ryan Howard was standing in the base path. And you don't want those two colliding because somebody's going to get hurt. Mather is now nine for his last 21 with three home runs. Pitch up and into Ludwig. Singled up the middle his first time up. Joe Mather. You know, there was a point we kept on saying that Chris Duncan could be the real, you know, difference maker in the second half. And his season may be over with a herniated disc in the neck. But Joe Mather Good point. could be that offensive weapon that you didn't count on. Very good defensive player and as we have seen he is making the adjustments defensively he's been very good. Offense is coming around. Three and two on Ludwig. On deck Troy Gloss three two pitch. Ludwig reaches forward slowly hit tough play. Brentlett throws on the run safe and Ludwig. He's on his way to second base as the ball finds its way to the seats. That'll be an error on Brentlett after his tremendous play on Pools. You know, it'll be base hit in, in E5. As you know, you make one great play, you're you're all pumped up to make another. And then the bad throw gets away from Ryan Howard and bounces into the stands. And sometimes, you know, as a first baseman, you gotta make that judgment. Come off the bag. Don't try and stretch it, and make sure that it doesn't uh, become a throwing error and put a guy in scoring position. Troy Gloss did not play last night. First time that hasn't happened since Kansas City. Up the middle, Rollins diving stop. Gloss will be safe at first, and that saves a run. So that's four base hits here in this inning for the Cardinals. Another. Very good effort. As Jimmy Rollins goes up the middle. He dives to his left. Got the ball, but couldn't hold on to it. Knew he wasn't going to get Troy Gloss, or at least felt he could. When he made contact, the ball popped out of his glove. So his first instinct was to look to third and see if he get Ludwig rounding the bag. Gloss really didn't look like he got out of the box real quick either. This is kind of similar what happens with the Cole Hamels and I mean he is a nine game winner. First and third and Molina hits it out of play. But Cole Hamels a lot of time doesn't get a lot of run support and he will give gives up a few home runs. He's given up 22 home runs and many times that's been his undoing. Molina fly to center first time up three nothing Cardinals runners at first and third. Always worry about the double play off the bat of Molina. This one is hit out to left. That will stay in the park. Burl makes the catch. Ludwig will tag to make it four nothing St. Louis. RBI number 41 for Molina. So the air by Brentlett costs him as Ludwig comes around to score. Here's Aaron Miles. Miles struck out swinging his first time up. And Miles hits it slowly towards second base, taken there by Utley. Big inning for the Cardinals. Joe Mather with home run number five. RBIs 10, 11, and 12. A three run shot to get the scoring started for St. Louis. Mather, the home run. Molina, an RBI. And the Cardinals lead it four to nothing after three. Joe Mather with a home run, four nothing Cardinals. Top of the fourth. Ryan Howard leads it off. Mentioned that he went to Missouri State countless times, we have mentioned that, but. 
He was one of the guys that laid the foundation for their 03 World Series team. He was done in 01, but one of the prime players that was able to set the foundation. It sat out of play into the upper deck. Monthly report on Ryan Howard. Slow start in April. Just five home runs, big May, big July, and average down to strikeouts up, but production is there, no doubt. This is going to have five in August. Well, he's got 30 right now, 5, 10, 5, and 10. 15 more, be 45. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, that pitch no. was up, and he got away with it. High fly ball into left center. Crandall Baseball on FSM Midwest is brought to you by your St. Louis area Kia retailers. Kia, the power to surprise. Rogers Hornsby. A photo, Cardinals Hall of Fame, and some of those photos you will see around the ballpark here in St. Louis. Howard is 0 for 1, and it brings in Pat Burrell. Struck out his first time up. Bit of a struggle in the first inning for Loesch as he walked a pair and he did strike out two. Another walk in the third. And he has four strikeouts. Brewer hit a home run in the fourth inning, a two run home run off him in his victory against the Phillies this year. 1 0 is hit foul. Patrick Berry and Terry Heidger be married tomorrow. And taking in the game tonight on FSN Midwest. Pitch count already at 56 for Kyle Loge. We're in the fourth. One ball, one strike on Pat Burrell. To left. Mather. Juanita Coney from Greenbrier, Arkansas. Happy 83rd birthday. Juanita Coney from Greenbrier, Arkansas. Met a young man today. He's 82 years old today from Edith, Oklahoma. Farrell Hanna. He was not only a World War II, but also a Korean vet. He's got 10 family members celebrating his birthday here tonight. Two outs and nobody on. Backhanded by Pujols. He was kind of in between as to whether or not he wanted to backhand it or take it another way. Midway through four and it's four nothing. Let's take a look at our fruit of the loom feel for the game. Joe Mather shows a feel for the game brought to you by Fruit of the Loom with his three run homer. Cardinals add another run and it's four nothing. Hamels back to work. The Cardinals with six base hits. A strike on the outside corner to Kyle Loge. One ball, one strike. Loge so far, so good. A little bit of a jam in the first because of a pair of walks, but pitched around that. No problems. Well, we're seeing getting support from his offense. I'd like to see how he would bounce back after the rough outing in New York, losing for the first time since May the ninth. And a swing and a miss. Loge strikes out. I thought it was interesting how John Moselock answered the questions about Lowe's. He was just forthright, honest, to the point. He said, look, we're not trading. That's it. And normally you hear a GM just say, well, if we're blown away, maybe we'll take a look at it. He said, there's no way we're trading. Well, I, I think what it also tells is he believes in this team, didn't make any deals, and he's not uh, sending a signal to his team or the fan base that uh, surrender is in the in the making 
Here's a 1 0 pitch to Skip Schumacher. You can't re sign him, and he becomes a free agent. We'll take the draft picks and uh, go from there. But right now, wants him on this team and help this team win. There's the curveball, and that is a foul ball. Well, wise on Brian Howard's part to just let it continue to roll and see if it would roll fair. One ball and two strikes. Skip waves at it. Jim Hayes is standing by with a special guest. Yeah, Arkansas football coach Bobby Petrino. Uh, Bobby, first year at Arkansas. Little rebuilding to do. Some of the big names like McFadden aren't there. Well, yeah, we have a little rebuilding to do with our skilled positions. Anytime you lose two first round draft picks like Darren McFadden and Felix Jones, the good thing is we have a good offensive front, defensive front coming back, and we recruited very well at the running back and receiver position. You got a little taste of the NFL. You found it wasn't for you. No, I'm happy to be back in college football and, and really looking forward to the season. We get started on Monday. Uh, everyone comes in Sunday and we get to start practicing right away. I see you have a Cardinals hat. You were telling me you, uh, you're a bit of a Cardinal fan. Yeah, I've been a Cardinal fan for a while. As I uh, When I lived in Louisville, of course, there's a lot of Cardinal fans in Louisville. Went up to Cincinnati, watched them play up there a few times. and. Always been a Tony La Russa fan. Yeah, and you had a chance to, to visit with Tony uh, before the game? Yeah, I did. I did. I got to talk to him a little bit, and a uh, very impressive man. Bobby, thanks for the time. Enjoy the game. Thank you very much. All right, Bobby Vitrino, guys. We send it back to you. Okay, Jim, thanks. Surprised we didn't see him at Turner Field. Two balls and one strike <laughs> on Isturis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And that's a line shot at Ryan Howard. Four innings in the books. Brentlett, Ruiz, Camels coming up. We're back and let's take a look at what's on tap. Brought to you by Bud Light. That's it. Phillies the Cardinals tomorrow night. Pre-game show will start at 5 p.m. on FSN Midwest. Game time 6:15. Five o'clock with the pregame show. Top of the fifth. It's four nothing St. Louis. Cal Lowe's with 59 pitches on the night. Seven, eight, and nine in the order for the Phils. Always thought as a starting pitcher, you really a little extra adrenaline here in the fifth inning because that's your hump inning. You have to get over it to, to qualify for the win. Really bear down in this inning especially when you have the seven eight and nine because it should be a relatively easy inning and just make sure it is. Here's a one one pitch. Brentlett looks at his strike. Struck out swinging back in the third inning. Loge has struck out four and he has walked three. The one two pitch waved at it and a strikeout. High throw and Pujols is on the bag for the out. Starting to settle in isn't he after that first inning in which he walked two. He's retired six in a row. And it brings in Carlos Ruiz. to right his first time up. That pitch is in the dirt for ball one. <laughs> Lewis has been getting those calls tonight. Pitches on the outside corner, low and away, just like that. Well, when you consistently hit that spot, you're going to establish in the mind of an umpire that you can 
have the command and you can almost lull an umpire into uh, giving you that wider strike zone. Two and two. Ruiz was a second baseman converted to a catcher. 2 2 pitch. Taps it out in front of the plate and Hit he's him. out. Yep. They'll call him out. Hit him at the, after he left the batter's box. Who will they give the out to? The, the put closest, out to. Closest defender, Molina. Suntrip.com cam is brought to you by the Suntrip Automotive Group. A 2 you. Because assisted. kicks right there. Laz Diaz saw he was closest to the catcher. And so two unassisted. Good camera work right there. Hamels with two outs and nobody on. Big Cardinal fan Joanne Kurtz watching the ball game tonight. Happy birthday. She's 77. Joanne Kurtz. The 2 0 pitch. Goes to 3 0 on the pitcher, Cole Hamels. There's been a knock against Lowe's tonight, the walks. The pitch count already at 71. That's the only thing you could uh, criticize him for, but see if he can't battle all the way back. Strike on the outside part of the plate. Hamels with a base hit out to left. That breaks up the no hitter. Clean base hit to left. Well, he fall behind 3 0 to any hitter, even a pitcher. You're flirting with danger, and at least he made a hitter's way on instead of his fourth walk allowed. Jimmy Wallens has already walked twice in this game. Stolen base back in the first, then was left stranded. Left stranded back in the third. Rollins back at Loge, and he's got it. Self defense. Midway through five, and the Cardinals lead it by four runs. Mather, Pujols, Ludwig coming up. Six hits for St. Louis, one for the Phillies, and a 4 0 lead for the St. Louis Cardinals. There's a look at the Ford Plaza here at the ballpark. And let's take a look at our pitching comparison. Hamels and Loge. Five innings for Loge, just one hit, no runs. Hamels, six base hits allowed. Three of the four runs have been earned. He's walked one, he struck out three. And a hot night here in St. Louis. Big inning for him right now because you've got Mather, Pujols, and Ludwig. Two, three, and four, trying to keep this a four run Cardinal lead. It's not retired Mather here tonight, nor Ludwig. Mather, the big blow, the three run home run in the third, singled in the first. Back to Hamels. Stepping on the bag, it's Ryan Howard. Ryan Howard making some friends before the game. As a matter of fact, one of those young men is Brandon Mender. Had a chance to meet Brandon through the Make a Wish Foundation, and thank goodness he is healthy and back here at the ballpark. I met him a few years ago, but he didn't know Ryan Howard was going to come by and say hello, and very gracious of Ryan to do that, making. A lot of memories here at the ballpark. Love seeing that, don't you? Oh, absolutely. You can't see it enough. And, and, you know, I know you have a busy schedule and you got places to do and things, that, you know, you got meetings, you got all kinds of things. But when they do have time, they can really make a lasting impression. Off speed pitch again to Pujols. Ford Keys, Pujols. To see what he's done 05, 06, 07, and 08 against the Phillies. Taps back to Hamels. Reach for it. Fires a strike over to Ryan Howard. Well, that looked like early in his career. 
at bat. You know, in the 23 games in 2001 to two, no home runs, only 10 RBIs, but look at since 05 to 08, 325 average, 10 home runs and 25 RBIs. 0 for 3 tonight, but still early. Hamels has pitched seven or more innings and 18 starts this year, including nine of his last 10. His shortest outing, his last one. And Atlanta, three and two thirds and nine runs. Ludwig on a pitch that's up, out to deep left, and it is gone. Second Cardinal home run. This one a solo shot, number 24. It's five to nothing, St. Louis. 75 RBIs. That leads the team along with his 24 home runs and a three for three night for Ryan Ludwig. Second time he's gotten Hamels. Hardy's prime cut of the game off the bat of Ryan Ludwig. And pitch up, the breaking ball hanging up there, and uh, just a rifle shot. What a year for Ludwig. Just love seeing it, boy. He hadn't changed one bit since he came up last year and now being an all star this year. The same guy. That pitch is a ball to gloss or suntrip.com cam brought to you by the Suntrip Automotive Group right on the pitch. Bam. Hamels has allowed five or more runs and six starts this year. Last start in this one tonight. 0 and 3 in those decisions. The Cardinals, of course, we talked about, have struggled so much against lefties, and yet against this left hander, they've had pretty good success. I can get good. The 2 0. Put yourself in good hitting counts. You put yourself in there where you're ready for a pitch that first pitch that you see in the strike zone. Three and one. Next to Troy Gloss. Popped up. Ruiz will give it a look and it's out of play. Another big, big crowd tonight here at Bush Stadium. Cardinals on pace for over 3.4 million to come through the turnstiles again this year. All star game next year. 3 2 pitch. Distance of Ludwig's home run 398 feet. It's one of his weak ones. Last home stand, he hit the longest home run in this ballpark's history. 450. Majority of his home runs go at least 400 feet. Mather in there as well. He is homered. If you're just joining us tonight, got things going with a three run homer. Molina with a sack fly RBI. Solo home run by Ludwig. Five to nothing Cardinals. Three two pitch to Gloss. Got him. He knew it. And a strikeout. We have played five. Cal Lowe's back to work. He'll deal with Victorino, Utley, and Howard. Long home run again by Ludwig. 5 0 St. Louis. Shriners Hospitals for Children is the organization that makes Cardinals crew possible on FSM Midwest. Tune in with your kids tomorrow at 11 and see what adventures Andy Bennis, Fred Bird, and the U Man will have in store for you. It's Cardinals crew tomorrow at 11 on FSN Midwest. Ryan Ludwig, another home run tonight. His 24th. He now has 75 RBIs. He had a 450 foot shot off of Cole Hamels at uh, Phillies ballpark. Only hit tonight for the Phillies from their pitcher Cole Hamels. Victorino here then Utley and Howard if anybody can reach Pat Burrell. Five nothing Cardinals. That pitch is up and a base hit out to left center extra bases possibly. The speed of Victorino on his way to second base and in there with a double. 
this year when you can't be home to watch the Cardinals on FSN, check out MLB.tv, and you can go online to watch every out-of-market Cardinals game live of the season. We got two months to go. For details, visit STLCardinals.com, where baseball is always on. Here's Chase Utley following the double. This could be a very tough inning for Loesch. He only averages six innings per start. And he's going to go through the heart of the order. A breaking ball down and in. Uh, Chase Utley, I think, has been hit by more pitches than anybody in the National League, and he almost left his leg out there to be hit that time. Been hit 14 times, tops in the National League. Want to go inside, and that is ripped down the right field line. Foul. Didn't get in on him. Tried to get that ball in on him and left it out over the middle of the plate. Might have been cautious or conscious of the presence of Molina set up inside and was a little too quick on it. Opposite way, long way to go for Joe Mather. And that is a fair ball. Hops over Brown, the sidewall. Brown will double. Mather was shifted over towards center field. And it's a ground rule double RBI in that play. And I wonder if he almost gave up on it. It sure did look like he pulled up, but I think he might have also been realizing that he couldn't get to it. We kind of lose our line of sight. You see he pull up awful, awful quick there. Yeah, he was ready to really play the camera. Didn't That's make why. any difference is you know you got that that side wall and a, a 45 degree angle so it could get behind you. So I'm not going to criticize how he played it because he wasn't going to get to it and he could have made a fatal mistake of being too close and having the ball get behind him. So back to back doubles and now it's Ryan Howard. Phillies get on the board. It's 5 1 in favor of the Cardinals. For Utley that's RBI number 76. No activity in the bullpen. Warm night pitch counts only going to be 75 after this delivery. Phillies and Cardinals tomorrow at five here on FSN Midwest. Here's a one one. What's the one area Al that you want to avoid with Ryan Howard with his great power. Well but we've also seen him have the ability to take a ball and hit it to the opposite field so. You don't want to get his arms extended. Two one pitch. Two and two. Now the one thing about him you know is. He will strike out so. You. You want to pitch to him but you want to respect that awesome power. And Howard has been swinging a hot bat. He's hit safely in his last six straight. Eight for his last 26 with a home run and seven RBIs. He has walked tonight. He's flied out to left. The 2 2 pitch to Ryan Howard. Big pitch right here coming up. Three and two. Here's a 3 2 pitch on the inside corner struck him out couldn't pull the trigger. That's how you want to pitch him. <laughs> you know you. Going after him inside. Let's go pitch by pitch in the at bat brought to you by Chevrolet and you know, he starts him off with a fastball he's just trying to work on the inside part of the plate that was a pitch right there he could have handled back inside. It took a little off on a change up there back inside of the fastball and now he finally gets one right there little tailing action back he gave up on it and got the strikeout six on the night for Loge. 
Pat Burrell is struck out. He's also flied out to left. Activity in their bullpen. Hey. That's one thing you see with Loge when he is on. It's at pinpoint control, nothing left over the middle of the plate. Late action on his pitches. James Happ, the lefty's warming up. Just like that. Good slider there, and you know, he's throwing that sinker. He's got the four seamer. There's James Happ, left hander, so it doesn't look like Hamels is going to get through uh, beyond the, the fifth inning, maybe. Of course, they're hoping they'll pinch hit. Here's the 0-2. One ball and two strikes. Burl could lose one in a hurry and put the Phillies right back in this game. 26 home runs on the season. 64 RBIs. He struck out swinging. Two runners on in the first and flight out to left. He's got 89 strikeouts. He can get him to chase at times. That's what they were trying to get him to chase the breaking ball. Down the way. Don't want to hang one to him. Well, Manny Ramirez showed up at Dodger Stadium. That's a positive. He showed up. Didn't rip the owner. Actually took a tour of the stadium with the owner. That's progress. It is. K Rod with his 45th save. Angels win at Yankee Stadium, one to nothing. That's down the left field line in trouble. Into the seats it goes, and just like that, it's five to three. There's your hanging slider. Pair of doubles and this home run, number 27 by Burl, and it's a two-run St. Louis lead. Just like the other start for Kyle Loesch. This time the two run home run by Burroughs in the sixth inning that what time it was in the fourth but three runs allowed here in the sixth inning and made some good pitches but throws this slider and you see a cocka right there but it doesn't have the tilt and it stays up in the zone and Pat Burrell said earlier don't hang a breaking ball to him because he'll lose it and he did one. Suntrip.com cam brought to you by the Suntrip Automotive Group. Activity as Springer gets up in the Cardinal bullpen. Jeff Jenkins will be the hitter. Still only one out. Fly to center and also grounded out to first. He's 0 for 2. So the only thing that's going to really hurt Kyle Loesch in free agency is his ability to go deeper into games. And if you're going to get the, the real star money, he's got to pitch deeper in than six or five and two thirds into games. Here's a 102 Jenkins. That's over the middle of the plate too, and that's a fair ball into the corner it goes, and Jenkins on his way to second base, standing up with a double. So three doubles in the inning. A home run and Loge is on the ropes here with one out in the sixth. Tomorrow night it's Creep Core Camera Photo Night here at Bush Stadium. I want to remind you that gates open at 415 Creep Core Camera Photo Night. Tomorrow night at 415. Burl's home run measured at 7, 378 feet. And now you have the tying run at the plate and Eric Bruntlett. Five of the last seven batters have hit the ball extremely hard. Remember the Jimmy Rollins lined the ball right back up that he speared self defense. And then you have the three doubles and a two run home run this inning. And Cole Hamels had the the single the first hit with two outs in the fifth. Manny Ramirez by the way will wear number ninety nine. And Tony Russo has seen enough as this time Loesch is only going to give you five and a third. So his ball club can sneak up on you in a hurry. Springer coming in. 
5-3 St. Louis. Baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Rico. Move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. By your local St. Louis Chrysler dealers. And by Bank of America, the official bank of the St. Louis Cardinals. So the tying run now comes to the plate. It's 5-3 in favor of the Cardinals here in the top of the six. And Tony La Russa now wasting no time to go to Russ Springer. Well, like I said, you know, he's given up four hits in this inning. He gave up his first hit with two outs in the last inning. And then a line drive was the final out. So it is a two-run lead with a potential tying run at home plate. Russ Springer has been so reliable of getting out of an inning with any firm damage, and that's what you're asking him to do again. First pitch by Springer. Prior to the game uh, last night, the two previous, he had come in for one out, and both games just took one pitch. Going to have to work a little harder tonight. Yes, he is. Here's a 1-0. One ball, one strike. Springer has given up only two earned runs since May 8th. He's not given up a run in seven appearances since the All Star break. Runner at second, one ball, one strike on Brentlett. One and two. Kyle Loge with six strikeouts on the night. Two of those of Bruntlett was chasing pitches low and away. These guys are former Houston Astros teammates. How about a good slider down and away to chase another? The fastball, but thinking that Bruntlett might expand his zone. Two and two. Went after that one, but got a little piece of it. Two balls, two strikes. Tying run at second base. Five to three Cardinals. They had a five run lead. With four runs in the third, another in the fifth. And the Phillies have scored three here in this inning. Popped up and out of play. Here's another 2 2 pitch. Russ is having to work tonight, huh? Big time. Told seven pitches. And as you said, his last two outings, he threw one pitch in each game to get his man and end the inning. Cardinals playing. Here on August 1st with three against the Phillies Dodgers three next week and then a long road trip coming up 2 2 got him Bruntlett has struck out for the third time FSN previews upcoming Missouri football the Big 12 Conference our preview shows premiering tomorrow afternoon the Missouri pre uh, preview show will be at 430. Big 12 football previews tomorrow. And they can start watching the pre pregame show at 5. Yeah. Right? 4 30 football, 5 o'clock, our pregame, 6 with the play by play. 
A swing and a miss by Ruiz. 0 for 2. Jenkins a runner at second base. Here's an 0 1 pitch. The Phillies have been involved with a couple of collisions with catchers this year. We saw the one earlier this season with Molina and Bruntland, and then Victorino was. Uh, the one that got Brian McCann, the Atlanta catcher. 92, a little rise on that pitch. One and two. Russ, 39 years of age, still get it up there in the low to near mid 90s. Still has a wicked slider and a wealth of knowledge. Tapped foul. Russ Izzy, you know, the, did a lot to help and teach Franklin the nuances of the bullpen. Now it's Kyle McClellan and Jaime Garcia. He also got Malone down there that can. It's been in every situation from starter to short reliever, to spot starter, long man. One two pitch from Russ Springer to Ruiz. Las Diaz almost came up with the see, right hand. He wanted to. Yeah. He thought about it and caught himself. And I thought it was a bit high. Count even two and two. Springer for the most part Al is used for that one inning and that's it. You don't see him go multiple innings. 2 2 pitch. Grounder hit to short. Taken by Isturis. The Phillies pick up three and knock out the Cardinal starter, Cal Loge. Between innings, there's Cal Loge. Tony La Russa thanking Russ Springer. Another solid outing by Russ. And Loge has a chance at another win. Hamels, because the Phillies get back in this game, he's still in there. Well, they were going to pinch hit for him. He was left him. on deck. Yeah, he was on deck, so this will more than likely be his final inning of work. They have a righty warming up in their pen. Clay Condry. And a strike at the knees on the outside corner to Molina. He feels like he's got a reprieve. There you see the right hand are warming up. And never know, throw a shutout inning. He's still the pitcher of record. His team comes from behind. He could still pick up a victory. Brewers lead nine to nothing. That's in the top of the eighth. It's behind Jeff Supon, or at least he started that game. Seven shutout innings. Jaime Garcia in the Cardinals bullpen. He was just recalled today for the second time as Jimenez was sent out. So his bullpen is very, very good. One two pitch. But Brad Lidge he's had a great year for the Phillies. He's been outstanding, but Charlie Manuel's seen his team when he has a lead after after eight innings. They're 48 and 0. I think that's, that's correct. But Let's tap foul two and two. Colorado leading their game. It's five to nothing in the ninth. Washington leading Cincinnati five to two. Mentioned that the Pirates have already beaten the Cubs today, three to nothing. Boston and Oakland, they're in the tenth. It's one-one. 
Angels over the Yankees one to nothing Rivera gave up the run Rodriguez the save the 2 2 pitch to Yadier Molina and the Phillies are 48 and 0 when leading after eight innings let's check out the front foot of uh, Yadier Molina with his stance uh, he and Albert Pulholtz are so close and helps out an awful lot so you can see why not emulate that heel up Yanni's in the top 10 in hitting Albert's second in the major leagues with batting average only five teams in the majors have not lost a game when leading after eight innings you mentioned the Phillies at 48 no Cardinals are 51 and four this year when leading after eight and Molina strikes out <laughs> Cardinals alumni kids clinics are coming to Chesterfield on August 5th and 7th boys and girls ages 7 to 13 can learn baseball fundamentals from former Cardinal greats John Mabry Rick Horton and Scott Terry. Three four five nine eight nine one, or visit us online at stocardinals.com. Here's Miles with one out. Hamels has struck out four. Cardinals with seven base hits. They about hit the Phillies seven five. Russ Springer was staying at the on deck circle now. Brendan Ryan has just replaced him. Hey. Miles in his at bats tonight. Not real comfortable against Cole Hamels. Here's a one two pitch. Ouch. You worry about Aaron Miles is wearing down a little bit, playing every day. Seems like for the last couple of weeks, and rightfully so, with his bang average. Two and two of the count. Five three Cardinals. We've seen Brendan Ryan's playing time cut back. He's on deck. Miles stays alive. Well, he can just put a ball. Foul ball off at the latest second. That just went right to the ball boys. And he was the one that hit that screamer into the eye of Incarnacion. Right. I asked uh, recently about Incarnacion. The 2 2 hit into right field, base hit. This Capriati telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals. And may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cardinals. And Barry Weinberg said that, you know, the Cardinals have reached out to try to communicate and find out the progress on Incarnacion, but they've gotten very little information back. And he was in Boston. Yes, still, that's the latest, is still in Boston. Is, what I understand and you know the eye improving but to the point where they ever be able to play baseball very doubtful A pitch in the dirt to Brendan Ryan that's a shame yeah and the way, you know in 1999 he was hit by a pitch that same eye and had to have reconstructive surgery at that time put a metal plate in there and you know Facially, they can they can reconstruct it again, but the eyesight was damaged this time around. Brendan Ryan is a pinch hitter this year, is two for ten. On the season, his average has dipped to 239. Brendan's had a hard time being a bench player. So fidgety, jumpy, and you know, high energy that. 
sitting on the bench and not playing every day has been a little bit of a, a test for him. There's a changeup, and Hamill's last couple of innings, Al, his changeup looks to be a little bit better. Well, I think the change is better, but I, I you know, he's gotten burned on some curveballs. He's got great arm action on the on the changeup. See, he is really he, fighting it right now, too. He can vary his his fastball speeds. Two balls, one strike on Ryan. Let's see if the Cardinals want to do some running or hit and run. Broke his bat, shallow right center. And backing up, it's the second baseman, Utley, for the catch. Back to first goes Miles. This Sunday is the Build a Bear Workshop Day. And that'll be Sunday night. Don't forget, that's now a Sunday night game here at Bush Stadium. Cards and Phillies, 3 4 5 9, or visit us. Online at STLCardinals.com. Schumacher one for two. In the air, near the line and left, and a catch made by Pat Burrell. Seventh inning rolls in when we come back. It's 5 3, St. Louis. Top of the seventh, and it's 5 3 in favor of St. Louis. Jaime Garcia is into the game, and this is our suntrip.com cam. Bartman, no. Oh, he's going to save him. Oh, is that what he was doing? Oh, yeah. He was going to make sure that Burl didn't run into the wall there. Look at him. Still got his hands out. Good the anti Bartman. Jaime Garcia recalled from Memphis today our Chevrolet call to the bullpen. We've seen him work out of the pen. It also made a start for the Cardinals this year too. That's right. And you know the Cardinals felt that and look at the nice applause here for so Taguchi again. Isn't that classy. We hope Jaime Garcia understands. <laughs> this is the second time through for the Philadelphia Phillies. So he had that one initial time, and I think this one was louder than even the first time. And you know, and it's been a tough. I had a chance to talk to So a little bit. He's just really getting very few plate appearances. Hitting 233. Bounces it to short as Turris makes the play. So Garcia gets the first out. John Mosellock was talking with us yesterday. When I asked him, I said, Aren't you concerned about your lefty situation right now? You don't know about Flores when he comes back, if he's going to be right. Malone is your one lefty. Are you concerned? He said, Well, right now we've got to fill that within. And it's Jaime Garcia. Without any hesitation, he said, This is the guy. Right. And it's Jaime Garcia. They've sent down Flores to uh, kind of recapture his mechanics. And so there's a you know a, a viable option also. And if you can you know you got the loan the old veteran that's, that's there so you know you so you have the two that Tony prefers. But here's here's the situation Dan that you know if you can find that Jaime can handle this job and floors when he comes back up and he will you know, at the latest would be a September call up. And you don't give up any prospects. And remember, the asking price was was very high. That play made for round number two. By the way, with Sotoguchi, he led everybody in pinch hitting last year. He was very good in that spot. Hit over 400. This week, it's Fox Saturday Baseball. Prince Fielder, the Brewers, look to keep pace in the Central. They'll visit Atlanta to take on the Braves. White Sox, Ken Griffey Jr., they'll battle the Royals. Fox Saturday Baseball, game of the week. So far so good with Jaime Garcia. That's going to roll foul. Just foul right before it hit the bag.
I mean, Jaime Garcia, remember, too, he's been conditioned as a starter. So you could see him not only pitching here the seventh inning, and hopefully he retires Victorino, but then start the the eighth inning and get Utley and Howard. Victorino, high fly ball out to left, and the catch made by Mather near the track. One, two, three, go the fields. Jim Spinell is tonight's merchandise winner in the Hyundai Lawn Drive inning sweepstakes. If the Cardinals hit a home run, Jim Spinell qualifies for the Sonata drawing in September. To register, visit a St. Louis area Hyundai dealer. Cardinals have the top of their lineup coming up here in the bottom of the seventh. Old friend Joe Samuel from Anheuser Busch. Brian Matson is the new pitcher for the Phillies. Matson comes in this ball game and the times has been very solid but this bullpen for Charlie Manuel has been very good statistically. They're amongst the tops their lowest uh, second lowest ERA 3.06 among National League clubs and third lowest in the major leagues so. You know what they can do with Lidge comes on, but they can get pitched to him too. There's Turris, Mather, Pujols for the Cardinals. 5 3 St. Louis. Joe Mather with a three run homer. It was back in the third. One ball instead of one strike. Now they get the scoreboard correct. Final in Washington. The Nationals beat Cincinnati and Homer Bailey five to two. Jay Bruce with his eighth of the year. His tourist slaps it to left field, but the catch made by Burrell. Cesar is over three with a walk, and here's Mather. Mather with a single tonight, three run homer in the third, and he's also grounded back to the pitcher. Bottom of the ninth, and the Brewers lead their ball game nine to nothing. Cubs have lost. So if the Cardinals hold on, they'll be four back, tied with Milwaukee in the Central. We've seen Matson work out of their starting rotation. And now out of the bullpen for Charlie Manuel. Yeah, he first came up. He was used in the in the bullpen, and and as you said, it was a starter for a while. Got off to a little slow start this year. This wasn't a slow start, was it? We run home run from Mather. It's the third in what about it last eight games, and this was a three-run shot back in the third. He had a hit also in the first. Tapped out to. Cole Hamels in the fifth. Matson in 06 was a starter. And that year he had 11 wins. Last season working out of the bullpen, 38 appearances and uh, two and two. He's made six straight scoreless appearances against St. Louis, covering nine and a third innings. And at the end of the season, his ERA was about five and a half, but it's 260 in his last 32 appearances. Seen Jaime Garcia called up and with guys like Utley and the big man over at first there's the changeup. Mather strikes out there's that need for a lefty a couple of lefties in this series and we're going to see you know how he's going to pitch the first two batters Utley and and, and uh, Howard so you know, that's a good that's a good news about him too is you know he stretched out as a starter so you can expand it and, and you're not afraid to have, let him face right handers either. Two outs, nobody on for pools. 0 for 3 tonight. Oh for nine. How many pitchers can say that? Pools.
Pujols reaches for it and grounds out to short. Tricky hop that time for Rollins. Makes the play. Sends us to the eighth. Utley, Howard, and Burrow coming up. Let's take a look at tonight's Geico quote. I watch the game on television in the clubhouse, and I get a much better look at the pitcher than I do in the dugout. Greg Mazinski in our Geico quote. 5-3 St. Louis. It's so easy from up here, isn't it, Al? Very easy. From up here. Mm -hmm. First time, you know, I think as an ex-ball player, you look at, you know, from a, a high perch, one of the better seats in the house when you look down on the field. You, one, have to do remember how difficult it is. And it almost looks like a chess game. You can just pick up pieces and move them around. You get a much better view than you do from the from the dugout. Oh, and Utley just leans into the pitch. Now the tying run comes to the plate. So you That's see, what you were talking yeah, about, Al. He's hit 15 times, and you're, you're almost sometimes surprised that managers don't make a case that you have to make an effort to move. And he just basically turns right into it and allows the ball to hit him, not flush, and just a glancing blow. And right now, that's you know he's a, he's an old school heads up type player, and that's a smart move. Now it's Ryan Howard. He could tie it up. 30 home runs, just two back of done. He leads the league in RBIs. 95 on the year. He has walked. He has flied to left. He has struck out. First pitch, a strike on the outside corner. That's strike two, and Garcia going right at him. Rip to a double play to Pools. Garcia saying thank you very much. Well, just count two, don't they? Don't get double up a line drive, and you tell me how tough this is for the base runner. <laughs> yeah. And Utley just ran his way right to the dugout. Can't hit a ball any harder, and it turns into two. Franklin is warming up, but so far, Tony is going to allow Jaime to finish this inning. First pitch to Pat Burrell, a strike. That's strike two. You know, Burrow, of course, and these hitters for the Phillies have not seen Garcia before. I've always said that pitcher has the advantage. He knows what he wants to do to a hitter. That hitter doesn't know what he's going to get. The 0-2 is in the dirt. Hey, you know, it's a hungo, hungo night, and maybe a candidate would be Arlene Rankin, who lives in Solarborn. Point retirement community in Evansville, Indiana. She's a big, big Cardinal fan. Fastball, but wanting to elevate it, get it up. He does so, but doesn't chase. Two outs, nobody on. Two and two, the count. I was wondering if we were having thunder, but that's fireworks. Party on the on the levee. But I think instead of there, they're at the. The um, War Memorial party on the levee, off the le or party off the levee. Two two. Now there's fireworks and there's a party. I'm ready. <laughs> Three and two. Here it comes to Burl. He is homer tonight. Walk. Mm. Had him 0 two. So he has hit a man here in the eighth inning and now walked a, a batter. Let's see if they want to have Jenkins hit lefty lefty here against Garcia. Well, Jason Worth and that's a home run potential so Jaime will not face him. Tony will make this pitching change I'm sure. Yeah. 
And Izzy, Izzy is up and getting loose. Wouldn't that be something to see him back in that closer's role and go more than an inning to get the job done? Well, Franklin was warming up. And you wonder if, if they said something that it just wasn't wasn't ready and now Dave Duncan is making the pitch and change so he wants to have a little instructions with Izzy. So here comes Isringhausen. The tying run at the plate. And the Cardinals hold it on 5 3. Well welcome back to Bush Stadium as the Cardinals and Phillies are doing battle. Mather's got a three run home run in this ball game. Ryan Howard just lined into a double play. And then a walk to Pat Burrell brings in Izzy as Mather gives us the big offensive lift right there. Ludwig's also hit a home run in this ball game, but this is a tight nip and tuck game. Loesch started this game. He was outstanding. He gave up a home run to Pat Burrell like he did his other start. And Isringhausen is just coming in this game, trying to get the final out in the eighth inning with a potential tie and run at home plate in Jason Worth. Home runs have been an issue for Izzy this year. One and five record, ERA of 5.84. This is his first time he's pitched as the reinstated closer in a save situation or period. And pitched since Sunday. Opponents hitting 270 against him. He's given up five home runs in his 37 innings. 38th appearance here tonight. He has been unscored upon in six of his last nine outings. One ball, one strike. Jason Worth against the Cardinals this year, two for 11. He has hit two home runs in his career. He had a, a tied to Philly's record with an eight RBI game on May 16th. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Three and one. Check swing, he went. Big pitch right here on three and two. And Burl will be running. Saw Jason Worth with the Dodgers. From this area now with the fills. Three, two, two outs. One with the fastball away. Three, two. Got him. Strikeout for Isringhausen. Baseball tonight on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And by Chevrolet. See for yourself. Shop and compare at STLChevy.com. Ryan Ludwig to lead it off for the Cardinals. It's 5-3 St. Louis in the bottom of the eighth. We talked about the importance of the series for both these teams. And then you think about the head-to-head -head matchup, too. These two teams could be fighting for the wild card as well. That's right, Dan. Florida loses tonight to Colorado. What are the Mets doing? They're tied 3-3 with Houston in the eighth inning. So implications in the East and wild card. Tony La Russa in this game tonight did not waste time in pulling Kyle Loge. Just hit a wall against the Phillies. Go back to the last time he pitched here in St. Louis, stuck with him and probably stuck with him too long. 44,234, another sellout tonight. Ludwig, deep left. He's done it again, his second of the night. Number 25. The 
take long for that to get out of here, did it? Ooh. That one will be another one over 400 feet. It's Matson, who's in his second inning at work, and low ball hitter, and he just jumped on that pitch and sent it out of here on the line. Mather with a home run tonight, a three run shot. Ludwig, two solo home runs. It's four hits, two singles, and two home runs for Ludwig. And three runs scored. Gloss is one for three. The smoke is overhead from the fireworks. That is a, a sight we don't mind. Fifth career multi home run game for Ryan Ludwig. I would think that would either set or tie a career high in hits. What a year he has had, and his average now is hovering around 300 again. 25 home runs, 76 driven in. It's a happy birthday present to Jeannie Scott. Probably watching this game in Oklahoma. There's a little breathing room for Izzy, but he won't need that. Kenny Scott wants to know what a bench co coach does. Side so sit on the bench. It's down the right field line and foul. Good example of that would be Joe Patini. But sitting on the bench or? And what he does. Yeah. He does sit on the bench. You're right. He does a lot of little things and, you know, he's a. Just kind of a, a backup to remind Tony of certain situations, which probably never, <laughs> probably doesn't ever have to do. Yeah, you want to rephrase what a bench coach does for St. Louis. <laughs> you put a stopwatch there. You chew gum. You watch. Yeah, he, he does a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Setting but, the defenses. But you know, I mean, if you want to go tell a pinch hitter, you know, to do this, or sometimes a, a sounding board for the manager. You check the lineup card, make sure it matches up with with your lineup on the on the posted in the dugout with the one that you gave the umpire. A lot of little different things, just an extension of the of the major. Three two pitch. And a leadoff walk to Troy Gloss. On base for the second time tonight. Francisco Lariano has been recalled by the Minnesota Twins. The stretch run. Minnesota very much like the Cardinals. Not much was expected of them. Starting play tonight, just a half game out. They also released Levon Hernandez. I remember a couple weeks ago his agent wanted him recalled, but everyone was pitching well, but Hernandez has struggled late, so it made sense to bring up Lariano and release uh, Hernandez. No balls in a strike on Yadier Molina with a runner at first. And a, what a five minute delay in, in Minnesota with Garden High got tossed and then people started throwing hats and baseballs on the field. Not as he pulled his team, his order was restored five minutes. And I didn't see the video, but I read that Garden High kicked his hat and what went over his head. Yep. Here's an 0-2 pitch to Molina. You know those Minnesotans are very easily entertained. Tampa Bay, the start of play tonight, leading Boston by three games. The Yankees four and a half. American League Central, Chicago by a half game. Detroit five and a half games out. Out west. Angels running away with it. 12 and a half game lead. Here's an 0-2. Big game for the Mets tonight. All these games are big for teams that are in contention. The Astros just took 4-3 lead in the bottom of the eighth against New York. Berkman drives in Tejada for the go-ahead score. You know, so start giving the wild card races now. In the 
stat pack. Madsen in his second inning of work. Relief of Hamels. Big gap out in left center for Molina. Slowly hit left side. It's rolling. It's going to stay fair. Infield hit. For Yadier Molina. Two in a week, isn't it? <laughs> what were the odds of that one? He's got a home run, or rather, uh, in the city, a home run allowed, a walk and a single, and Molina tonight, sack fly. He's also flied out to center, struck out, now the infield base hit. I might. 99% of the time, that's the right play for the third baseman, but with Molina running, you may want to revisit that. Bruntlett a tough night at the plate. Three strikeouts. Seven, eight, and nine in the order due up for the Phillies in the top of the ninth. Now what do you do here? Because you got your closer now as your on deck hitter. Right. Nobody out. See how the Cardinals want to play it. First pitch to Miles. You don't know. There's you can bunt them both into scoring position, and then you bring up Izzy with one out, or they may let him swing away. Ball one strike. I'm sure some people would say, well, if he comes up, pinch hit for him. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you had, if <laughs> if it was your eighth inning man, you know, you, you work right into your hands, you pinch hit for him, and you bring in the closer. But this is his first save opportunity since he's been reinstated. And it would be a little. A little funny to bring in Franklin for for the save. And of course Tony let him hit the other night. When he changed pitchers with runners at second and third. It was last Saturday and said he. If he could have would use Mather they would have put Mather on and and so he basically said he thought Izzy had a better chance of hitting than his tourists. The Cardinals their 10th hit of the game this inning they're 52 and 13 and they get 10 or more hits. Here's a grounder hit to second. Tag Molina there and out at first is Miles. And they didn't have to run into the tag. Choice is easy now. Runner third and two outs. <laughs> Former position player in college. Well, that was part of Tony's reasoning. He said that Izzy fancies himself as a hitter. Oh one. Izzy is out at first. Ryan Ludwig another home run. His second of the night. Twenty five on the year.
Cardinals lead it six to three as we go to the ninth. Don't forget coming up after the game on the post game edition of U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live. We'll have Tony LaRusso's post game news conference. We'll hear from Ryan Ludwig on his two home run night. And it's Friday so somebody's getting a hungo all that. Plus we'll have Pat Paris and Rick Horton with analysis. It's coming up after the game. For now we send it back to Dan and Al guys. Little cushion now. That home run by Ludwig. 6-3 in favor of the Cardinals. Is he trying to close out this one for his save? He's eight away from 300 in his career. It looks like the Mets are going to go down. Houston is now leading seven to three and still batting in the bottom of the eighth. Marlins have lost, so everything would stay the same if Phillies lose this game. They'd still lead the East. Cardinals would gain a game on Chicago and stay tied with Milwaukee. Four games out. Cutter that time at 89 miles an hour. But late action on the cutter. You think of the cutter now, you think Mariano Rivera. He possesses one of the best. There's the curveball. That's strike two. Brontlid with three strikeouts. Time with the tying run on Isringhausen struck out the pinch hitter Worth. Ludwig would hit the home run, a solo shot to make it six to three. Interesting that Tony La Russa would go to his closer in the eighth inning, get Four that outs. final out. Yeah. Yep. Franklin had been warming up in the eighth. He since he has come back to the save list several times it's gone more than one inning. But that was in more of a middle relief. Chris Coast the backup catcher is on the on deck circle. The cutter. Didn't get him to chase. Good two pitch. two. Good pitch didn't go after it. Joe Bland will get the start for the Phillies tomorrow. Two starts. He's got two no decisions. He's given up seven earned runs in eight innings. Looper will be going for his 11th win of the season tomorrow night. Cutter again. The 2-2. Two -two. Three run lead. The only way they get back in this game is by walking people. Make them hit their way on. Get shook off the cutter. We go with a curveball. Fastball. Get off walk. Well, that's the last thing you want to see with a guy that has struck out three times tonight, lead off walk. Here's the backup catcher, Chris Coast. First pitch is strike. Three for three and first pitch strikes, but 14 pitches, seven balls, seven strikes. Sometimes, Dan, you know, when you're closing and you come in the eighth inning and, you know, you get out of a, a, a jam, you just, you know, you just mentally kind of relax a little bit. You got to sometimes put yourself back into a, a jam before you get your adrenaline going before you can close it out. Drives people crazy, but it's it's a common occurrence for closers. 0 2 pitch from Isringhausen. 
Got Dobbs on deck. Greg Dobbs is a pinch hitter deluxe. It's one of the reasons that Taguchi hasn't seen a lot of playing time, too. Defense has not been as good as it has been in the past, and Dobbs has been their top pinch hitter. Dobbs has 20 pinch hits already. Gonna throw to first. Just to be my favorite sign. Knock the guy down. Now it's throw to first. What has this game gotten to? One and two of the count. Fastball in. That one caught Molina. That is, how do you have bad speed? That you foul a ball off the catcher. Most people say that, you know, if you foul a ball off your back foot, you don't have the, the bat speed to be in the big leagues, but here he fouls a ball off the catcher's foot. And there, I don't think I've ever seen that. One and two. Cutter. Got him. Chased a bad pitch. Budweiser player of the game. Budweiser the great American lager. Player of the game tonight Ryan Ludwig with a couple of home runs. Number 24 and number 25 both solo shots. Ludwig our Budweiser player of the game. Greg Dobbs is going to pinch it here. Dobbs hitting 333 against the Cardinals, two for six. His 20 pitch hits this season have tied a Phillies all time single season record established by Doc Miller back in 1913. There have been seven different major league players this decade to have 20 pinch hits in a season. He's hitting 426. Two doubles, three. Two doubles, a triple, two home runs, and 14 RBIs as a pinch hitter. Or, or that's in the season as a pinch hitter. 292. Left handed batter up there, so playing behind that runner. Here's the 0 1. And with one out, why does that runner not take the base? Double play ball to end this game. Is he slow to the plate? You're not playing, you know, not holding the runner on. He can walk down to second. Dobbs homer in his first major league at bat. He's with Seattle. And he hits a fly ball into center. Schumacher there for out number two. The Cardinals are out away from winning game one. There's Jimmy Rollins to try to extend it. Walked a couple of times. He lined back to Kyle Lowe's, a screamer back at him in the fifth, and also grounded out the third. The fans come alive here at Bush. With a win tonight, the Cardinals pulled within four games of the Chicago Cubs. Now the runner takes second. First pitch is strike. Fielder's indifference, no stolen base. Pitch. Two and one. The Torino on deck. Trying to keep his arms and hands dry. Jimmy Rollins 
34 30 home runs 94 RBIs a year ago just eight home runs this year and 40 RBIs. Two one pitch. Three and one. Walked the leadoff man then got the next two. Jimmy Rollins knows he has to get on base. Full count. Will this be our final pitch of the game? The 3 2. He walked him. The ball scoots away. Runner will advance to third. So two walks, and now you've got the tying run coming to the plate. Mm, 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 mm. You might have to get Valone up. Might get both of them up, but Valone, you know, for you got Utley and Howard, but Dave Duncan's going to talk to Izzy right now. Get back in as these walks. He's got two walks, two strikeouts. Well, you're inviting trouble. Yep. Victorino can extend the game. Then you get into Utley and Howard. Good luck. And scored it a walk and pass ball to allow Bruntlett to go to third. They much rather would have Victorino. Having a career year with his nine home runs, 38 RBIs, a switch hitter. And 300 left handed, and Utley and Howard, the two next to him. The pitch is a strike. And taking second base, Jimmy Rollins. They said now will score two with a three run lead. And how big was that? Home run by Ludwig now. Gets this guy out. Won't mean a thing. <laughs> Ground ball. Hit to second. This should do it. And the Cardinals win. They take game one of the series. Ludwig, a pair of home runs. The save for Isringhausen. Win number 62 for the Cardinals. They're at 12 games above the 500 mark. Six to three, our final tonight. Post game show is coming up. Well, the game is over with a Cardinal victory over the Phillies. Rick Horton and I, though, standing by to bring you U.S. Cellular Cardinals live. Rick, a lot of great things to talk about tonight. Home runs tonight, two by Ludwig, one by Joe Mather. The Cardinal pitchers allowing just five hits tonight, four of them in one inning. It's an impressive victory. More on that coming up. Plus. Of course, tensions running high between these two teams. Could the Cardinals calm the first place Phillies? Plus, Kyle Lowe's trying to bounce back after his last outing. We'll break down the righty start. And we'll take you inside the Cardinal Clubhouse for player action, bring you Tony La Russa's press conference as well. Happy birthday, Francis Scott Key. Okay, say can you see that U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live is coming up next right here on FSN Midwest. Welcome to U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live. On a scorching Friday night in St. Louis, Cardinal fans are going home sweaty but happy after a Cardinals 6-3 win over the Philadelphia Phillies. Hello, everybody, and welcome back inside Bush Stadium. It's a post-game edition of U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live with the former Cardinal hurler, Ricky Horton. I'm Pat Paris. We're going to break down tonight's win over the Phillies. We'll take you downstairs here from Tony La Russa as well. Go inside the Cardinal clubhouse. Don't forget, Friday night means we're going to hand out the Hungo Award. And you can get involved in tonight's post-game show as well because it's U.S. Cellular Text Time. Text us a cardinal question, 37289. The number, remember to include your first name, where you're texting from, that message. Standard text messaging rates, of course, do apply. Rick and I will answer those texts coming up during the show. Let's head right back down on the field now. Jim Hayes, moments ago, talking to Ryan Ludwig. Two homers tonight. He's our Mid-America Chevrolet dealers, player of the game. Jim? 
Four hit night for Ryan Ludwig, including a couple of home runs. Cole Hamels is such a talented young pitcher. You guys got to him early. What's the key to getting that guy? You know, I was just lucky. I was fortunate. Like you said, he's a great pitcher, and uh, I got a couple changeups up. Uh, you know, the line drive ahead to left and the home run. Uh, he made some good pitches on me. That other batter just got lucky with a little dribbler down the line. But, I mean, he's one of the best in the game. You know, they got good arms over there. That's a good team. It's an important win for us to get this first one of the series. The ball you hit out was a first pitch changeup. Do you just see that pitch and react? Well, it was uh, almost the same location as the one that I hit for a line drive earlier. So when I saw, I, I saw a little bit quicker out of his hand that time and um, was able to stay back a little bit more. How about the way the bullpen picked up Kyle Loesch tonight? Oh, it's huge, it's huge. You know, tonight was a total team effort, you know. One through nine in the lineup and uh, starting pitching and bullpen, everyone did a great job. I know you guys are rooting for Izzy to make it all the way back. I know you guys are glad to see him out there getting it done tonight. Yeah, he did, he did a great job. Uh, a good Izzy's uh, as good as there is in the game. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he did an outstanding job tonight, and uh, I think he's going to keep it rolling. Last thing, the resiliency of this team. You guys get swept by Milwaukee. Things look bleak. You take three or four from Atlanta, win tonight. Where does that resiliency come from? Uh, we just got a bunch of guys on the field that play hard, you know, and uh, when you play hard, you got a chance, and uh, we've given ourselves a lot of chances this year. Ryan, thanks for the time. Thank you. All right, that's Ryan Ludwig. Let's go back to you. Jim, thank you very much. And that resiliency, well, we've seen it all year long, but they do seem to bounce back. Tonight, another one of those games you have to credit as a team victory. The entire club pitching in from starting pitching to all the offense, including the three home runs tonight. And then you get the bullpen involved as well. It, it, it certainly uh, makes you feel pretty good about uh, coming back off a very good road trip as well. Well, it's a typical 2008 Cardinal win where you've got production from a lot of people. But the most production came from our impact bat that we all wanted to trade for. That's Ryan Ludwig. By the way, he's been here all year. And the impact has been 25 home runs, 75 RBIs. How much more impact do you want? Ryan Ludwig has been outstanding in every situation Tony La Russa has put him in. And what a great start to uh, to this series against what I still think is one of the toughest teams in the yep. National League, and that's the Philadelphia and Phillies. And they were on a roll. They'd won five in a row, but the Cardinals put a, a stop to that. Let's get a view from the booth now. Dan McLaughlin, Al Roboski, back to join us now to uh, kind of wrap this one up. And uh, the bullpen, very impressive. And I think you like to see what we saw from Jason Isringhausen tonight, even though he had to gut it out there in the ninth inning. Don't like to see the walks. You love to see the save. It's a four out save for Isringhausen, number 293 of his career, and he's made uh, no secrets about it. He wants to get to number 300. He's back in that role, and what did you think of him tonight, Al? Well, I liked what I saw in the eighth inning as he strikes out the first man. He comes in here and, and gets a man, and that was the potential time run at the plate. Got a little sloppy in, in the ninth inning, but the most important thing is I think once he's been reinstated as a closer, he picks up this save. I think the next time it'll be a little bit easier for him and, and he'll avoid the walks. Ricky talked about the numbers for Ryan Ludwig this season. Uh, just a remarkable year and we still got a long ways to go and he's at 25 home runs with two months in the season left. Yeah, Ricky's talking about the impact bat and says what more do you want from 25 home runs? Well, we want a lot more and he's going to have to have company. We still got two months to play and every game is going to be pressure packed like this. There's never going to be an easy series because you still have to accumulate wins. All right. The Hungo Award coming up later in the show. Let's send it back over to Pat. Guys looking forward to plenty of candidates this week certainly for the Hungo. Let's go to the highlights. We're going to pick it up from the bottom of the third. Two on nobody out. And that's the hot hitting Joe Mather continuing those hot ways on a steamy night. Cole Hamill's the victim. Mather's fifth of the season, third this week, makes it three nothing cards. To the top of the fifth, now four zip. Ryan Ludwig up and baseball out. A no doubter from Ludwig, 24th of the season, puts the cards ahead, five zip. Phillies do get to Kyle Loesch in the top of the sixth inning, though. Runner on second for Chase Utley goes the uh, other way, just stays fair, and then bounces into the stands. It's a ground rule double. Shane Victorino scores, cuts the lead to 5-1. Then two batters later, it's Pat Burrell up, and he rips one to left. It reaches the bleachers. Burrell's 27th, a two-run shot, makes it 5-3. And the uh, Phillies have something going. But Cardinals bullpen able to uh, snuff it out from there. Top of the eighth, one on, two out, and newly named closer Jason Isringhausen warms up and then enters the game. Jason Worth pinch hitting, and he strikes out. Inning over, Cards preserve the 5-3 lead. Bottom of the uh, eighth inning now, Cardinals get some much-needed insurance. Ryan Ludwig again, second of the night, 25th of the season. Most homers by a Cardinal not named Pujols since Jim Edmonds in 29 in 2005. Trying to close it out is Izzy with two on in the ninth. Shane Victorino induced into a uh, ground out. 
Izzy's first save since May 5th. Cards win by the final of six to three. They get plenty of offense. They get the Mather home run. They get two from Ryan Ludwig, who goes four for four on the night. That's uh, the equaling of the career high for Ludwig as far as the four hits go. And it's the fourth time this season he's done that. Fifth career multi-home run game for...